How about now? Hold on. Let me put a headphone in so that we don't get any feedback too. How about now? Is it better? I think it's I probably good because I was just rambling about about Raitlin's brand new paints that she she got. Okay, good. We don't have any feedback or anything, right? We're good to go. Like once we start painting, we're good, right? Good. To, hey, Deidre, what you doing, girl? Okay. So we've got our winter ice skate. We are going to make a few modifications only because while I was taking a poll, everybody threw in the same request. They were like, why don't we do this? And we're going to do that. So whatever this was, I'm going to show you. Oh, Miss Kim says, hey, Ray Leanne. Hello. <laughs> Hope you had a Merry Christmas. I did. I did have a Merry Christmas. I, Ray Lynn and I have been oh, taking turns being Merry sick. Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. A Happy New Year. That, anytime you mention anything like the bird might be a Christmas song, Mother she's going to bust out in song. I love um, Christmas. <laughs> she loves all, all of us except for Mr. Wallace. We all love Christmas. Uh, okay, so we've got our ice skate base coated. Okay, so this is leaf green. This is just, uh, which white did I use? Because you know I bounce between uh, warm and cool white. It's called, this is warm white. That is called milk white. Just milk white? Yeah, you didn't even need any. This is warm white. Uh, okay, you be the same. <laughs> so y'all know when we paint with Land, it's it, it, we have extra commentary. So this is leaf green, warm white, gray sky. You know I get that backwards. Um... Raw umber, raw umber or burnt umber, raw umber, and this is just lamp black. I'm going to show y'all something in just a little bit. Um, in the mock-up, if you notice, it's not black, right? It's silver. So we are going to be using a metallic later on. And so sometimes I put different undercoats uh, on my, on my, under my, my metallics. Sometimes I put black, sometimes I put gray. It just depends on how intense I, I want my metallic like to look. Oh, she wants you to see her chicken. It looks adorable. It's adorable. You know me. I love me a good chubby bird. Hey, Michelle. Oh, thank you, Michelle. Thank you for spreading the love. So we're going to go ahead and uh, jump into our tutorial. I'm going to get rid of my base coat because oh, I still have little puddles of paint here, and they're already wreaking havoc on I, my workspace. I don't need it. You don't need it? No, mama. I throw it in my little trash bag up here. I'm going to flip this over so we have a nice little clean canvas because to me, it matters. It matters. Oh, it matters. Okay, so we're going to start off with stenciling because we work smarter, not harder. I'm not going to sit here and hand paint a bunch of snowflakes. So I'm going to just put uh, a few snowflakes on here. That was one of the things that was highly requested was that we use some snowflakes. So our background, I'm going to put it on the white part of my ice skate. So I'm going to use the base coat color that I base coated with, okay? I'm going to use this warm white. And I'm not going to need a lot of it. I'm going to take a little bit of this gray sky. And the reason I'm using these colors is because I want things to look harmonious, okay? Uh, I want my color theory to make sense. Does that, that mean perfect? I mean perfect? Perfect? No, I don't, nothing's going to be perfect. No, like, really. I don't know. What yeah, we're not We're not going for perfection. We're just going for really cute, ready to display, I right? Don't, so oh, let me go full table. You be beautiful. Where you can see a little bit closer. You be beautiful, Bob. You be yes, beautiful. I'm going to load my makeup sponge. Now, y'all know I get these from the Dollar General or the Family Dollar. Definitely not the Dollar Tree. Friends don't let friends use Dollar Tree makeup sponges. Anything else, though, I love Dollar Tree, but anything else, just not their makeup sponges for artwork because they are just horrible. I'm going to find a use for it. We're going to find a use for it, but it is not for stenciling. So I've got my warm white, which is a hint of my sky gray, uh, gray sky, and I mixed them on the sponge. I didn't make a puddle and mix them together. I just mixed them on the sponge. I want barely their snowflakes okay now look that's not barely there enough so we're gonna add a little bit more gray i just don't want this to look dirty uh, look so at that. i'm just gonna add until i'm happy and as small as this project is i'm not gonna have to i'm not gonna have to um reload my sponge too many times probably won't have to reload it at all oh yeah that's much better a little bit just Teensy, teensy bit darker, just because. 
And remember, paint dries darker. So that actually probably would have been just fine. But we're going to go just a teeny, just a teeny bit darker. You mean day darker? No, teensy bit darker. That's well, the same thing. It's not the same thing. Yes. Memory. Well, you're cracking me out. I'm cracking you out. You're not even listening. So I'm gonna use the same color. Uh, snowflake. I'm gonna use the same snowflake. Yeah, normally I like to bounce that's around and use different snow. snowflakes. I'm gonna use the set because all my snowflakes are different on this stencil. Oh my goodness! Isn't it beautiful? You can already see the potential. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stencil over my my holly berry. Just because, obviously, a holly berry is not green. I just base coated it green out of simplicity, keeping it super simple. But if I was about to stencil over my holly leaf, I probably would have fussy painted a little bit as, as far as, like, tried to keep my, my makeup sponge from hitting the holly leaf. But I'm just going over my holly berry, and I could care less. Oh, these are going to be barely there. You're going to have to really look. Look at mine close to see them uh, look at mine oh yours is beautiful now see i'm co i'm going over the heel that's painted gray hey, I and i'm gonna be I super to careful do, to do, do what do that on the edge. i'm gonna try and be very careful not to get this stencil really ginger. into any of my other base coated situation over here okay mom just her <laughs> paint brushes are in my way um just just to keep myself from having to rebase coat things. Oh my goodness. I uh, had the biggest brush. Right. We brush. should just do one more. And then we're just gonna do a little peekaboo snowflake. And keep the paint. And then yeah. And then we'll paint. pretty much be done with the stenciling. Yeah. And I'm so glad that y'all recommended, hey, why don't we put some snowflakes on there? Because I think they turned out Good. Absolutely perfect. Now you're going I'm to gonna take a little bit of a baby wipe because I did get a little bit over on right here. I got a little bit over right here, and all that's gonna do what happens is I'm just gonna take a little bit of a baby wipe and just wipe it away because my entire base coat um, base coating is completely dry. I could have even done that right here if I wanted to because our stenciling is such a light layer. It's not gonna take much to to buff it away. Okay, but honestly, that's not that, that big of a deal. So there we go. We've got our, we have, I did get a little messy. If I wanted to redo that, I could. I, I could just buff it away. My hands are not even dirty. I don't like it. I was going to just suck it up, buttercup, and leave it. Oh. But I don't like that it bled. That was the only one that bled, and that was because I used way too much pressure. So we're going to, we're going to wipe that one away. Look how easy that was. Because your stenciling is such a light layer yeah, of paint, like, as yeah. long as it's still wet and activated, like, you can like, buff yeah. it away. Look, your hands are still clean. Look at you. Yeah, but but you're just a bit darker. So I'm gonna put my stencil back over. Okay. And remember, we're gonna fussy paint around as best as we can. But even if we get over that heel line, it's okay. We can always take our baby wipe as long as it's a good wet baby wipe. And our paint isn't uh, bone dry. Our stencil paint isn't bone dry. Oh, that's so much better. I'm going to be so much more proud of that. Okay. So we're just going to buff that away. Get it off of there so that we don't have to rebase coat that. So there we go. Hey, Lauren, how you doing? Miss Diana's here. Bye. Here we go. So there's our barely there snowflakes. And those are going to make such a huge difference once we get all of our shading on here. And we get um, we, we get a little further into our project. What kind of paper do I use for my Paper? Paper. What do you mean? By, um, what stencil paper do I get for my Cricut machine and size? Okay. So there's all different kinds of stencil materials. There's some on Amazon. Uh, I would recommend at least five mil mylar if you're going to get stencil material. Um, Cricut stencil material isn't horrible. It's not my favorite, but it's not horrible. Oh, um, definitely not reusable. 
like you can reuse it a couple times if you properly take care of it, but it's not like wipe wipeable reusable. Like it's not like you can go scrub it like you can with this. I can go put this in the in the sink and let it soak for a little bit and take a baby wipe and clean them up. Although I'm not going to because I'm a horrible stencil mama. Um, these are the show off brands. Now show off material. Um, show off at Hobby Lobby. It's just the, the the brand of stencil that they offer. I've used that multiple times. Now you do have to set your Cricut or your silhouette to a, a more pressure setting and do multiple passes. Um, look. Oh, look at your little polka dots on your chicken. <laughs> so, five mil oh, mylar. I, I have used uh, manila folders before. Yeah, In fact, I I've used, this is a manila folder. And I use this over and over. And, In fact, it stays, it stays uh, taped to my, you use it all to my, my um, paint caddy over here. Just because I use it so yeah, often on smaller pieces. You want a baby wipe? No wipe. Want a little bit of wipe. Okay. Weird wipe. Oh, did I get that on my sweater? Did I get it on my sweater? No. no. It's my newest sweater. I bought it right before Christmas. Mommy, is, is this like a white on it? Can't the same. Okay, there we go. That's so before I get to cleaning my brushes, because we have, we're about to get down and dirty with the paint. I'm gonna put a little bit of brush cleaner in my my um, now, paint water. Don't get that. And all that's gonna do is just help and continue down. break down the. And I got a little bit of white on my it's project. A little bit mix, mix. Um, it's gonna help continue break down the paint as I wash my brushes. It's gonna help me clean my brushes later, instead of having all this build up. It will. I mean, paint will still build up in your brushes. It will, just because you're putting dirty brushes into dirty water where paint already exists but if you have that brush cleaner in your water just a little bit you, you saw I didn't put a lot if you put a little bit in your brush water it's not it, it's not going to create a pro it's, the problem's not going to be as bad um, when it comes to the paint buildup inside your brushes it's going to keep all that paint loose if that makes sense a little late but uh, glad to join hey Anna I need to practice with stencils so badly Lauren they are the easiest thing in the world they're the easiest thing. The, actually, it's more so the sponge. You want one that feels like memory foam. You don't really, you don't want one that has a bunch of pores in it. What's pores? Pores or holes. Little holes. All right, so we want to blow dry this. It should be dry, but just out of good measure. We're going to blow dry it. We want everything to be completely bone dry. That is the Craig Cutter <laughs> brush cleaner. I'll show you. It's the Craig Cutter. That's so I I have a couple that I bounce between. I like that one because it is a liquid. It's not like a creamy consistency. It mixes very well in the water, and it's it's not very expensive. It's like four dollars at Hobby Lobby, or at least that that bottle was four dollars, and it goes on sale sometimes. Okay, so we've got our white, our gray. This is going to be silver down here, and we're going to paint that probably really close to last because once you work with metallics. I like to make metallics and black the last thing I do. Um, let's work on, let's work from the, 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 the layer that's furthest back in the project to the top. And that would be the white. So let's get our gray sky out. That's the color that we mixed with white to make our stencil color. Let me get a piece of wax paper, okay? Uh, when it comes to wax paper, there is a matte side that feels like parchment paper. And there is a shinier side that has like a little bit of a grab or a little bit of a tackiness to it. That's the waxy side. We want the waxy side up. They, they know that already. They know that already. Well, I'm glad they know that already, Raven. Because you because you because you were yesterday. Well, they weren't they weren't with us yesterday. That was over in the paint studio, and we're not in the paint studio right now. Oh yeah. And the girls in the paint studio learned that yesterday. <laughs> oh. So we're going to we're going to take our angle brush. I believe this is a three eight. Yep, that's a 3 8 It's one of my favorite brushes to, to shade with. It's the perfect size for most projects. If you're doing a door hanger, you're going to want to bump up in size maybe to about a half inch. But honestly, 3 8 is a, is a good size. So let's go ahead and add just a little bit. I got I wet my brush. I totally saturated it and then wiped it off with my, my dish towel because y'all know I like to use dish towels. 
to, to dry with and not paper towels. So I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to start working this paint into my brush. I'm going to go Mama, back and look. forth. Mama. Oh, I see. He has a beautiful smile. He has a beautiful, so he does have a beautiful smile. So if you're wondering what Ray Lynn's working on yesterday, speaking of the paint studio, yesterday. I didn't even feel good. She did not feel good at all, so she did not get to paint with us. In fact, she was actually feeling fine while I was painting. Uh, well, and I told her she could paint after oh, I was done. This lovely but looking. over in the paint studio, I showed them how well, to paint our cute, we called this our down home chicken. Yesterday also. And then we painted, we painted our little barns. Painted our little barns. Oh, it was. It turned out to be such a what? cute project. What? I want to tell, tell them you're being sick. Oh yeah, you can tell them about you being sick. That'll give me a little yeah, bit of time um, to work on this. Ah, uh, yesterday I was sick. She's a good listener. She is a good listener. She is also a good talker. <laughs> yeah, I'm, not, I'm, I'm just gonna spritz my workspace. Not making this hop and wet. Just getting it a little bit good. Workable. Or gooder. Or gooder. Yeah. We're making it gooder. I don't have enough gray on my brush. I'll, I'll have gray. I'll have gray. You'll have gray? Yeah, right now, please. I'm I sorry, Mom. I, I, I didn't mean to say that. You want a little bit of gray? Yes, please. You Thank you. You're welcome. Now I can So just... you can spray your workspace. You can spray your your brush to keep water in it. You can dip your brush in clean water. I do that all the time too. Um, I have a little Romo here. Oh, okay. Romo. Is that his Romo? hair makes his way into my projects all the time, especially while I'm inside the house. Yeah, me too. All right, so we're going to rotate our work. So we just did this right here, right behind the little toe piece, okay? And we are going to I did, I did paint you a few yesterday because I didn't feel good. You didn't listen to me. Oh, I didn't listen to you, did I? Yeah, I was sick yesterday. And you didn't listen to me. Okay, so honestly, okay. She's ratting me out on this, okay? So yesterday, yes, she ended up being sick. She did not start off being sick yesterday. She, she ended up being sick. So yeah. yesterday, we started off right as Ray. You know, we had a... a a tutorial over in the paint studio. I told her that she could she could paint as soon as we were done. She could use just like normal. She could use all my leftover paint and uh, paint a project. I even had this little chicken cut out for her yesterday. And she, by the time we got done painting, she had declined um, so much to the point that she was running fever. Her cheeks were rosy. I mean, it happened so fast. It was and, and not scary, but almost. Like, what did you do to get sick that fast? I don't know. And um, she had even, during the live, she had said, Mama, I'm going to go lay down. I'm going to go lay down and watch a movie. And that's not normally like her because she likes to be in the middle, in the mix, the entire time we're painting. Carlos cold. Because she was cold. And that should have been my first... But my first inclination that she probably was running a fever because she could not get warm. Yeah, but now my mom turned on the fan. Well, I turned on the fan so you wouldn't continue getting hot. I know you felt cold, but your body was hot. So we were trying to keep you from overheating. Yep, I know that. She's feeling so much better. It was like just a little 24-hour virus. I'm going to wet my brush again. I don't, I'm not dipping mine in water just because I don't want to oversaturate. I'm really bad about oversaturating it. No way, Mom. Just put it in water. I don't want to put it in water. I just said that. I can't lie. So I'm just going around the project and just adding a little bit of dimension, just a little bit of softness. I'm not big on using a bunch of paint pen to, to add my definition lines. The, the lines that tell me what what shape it's things hard. are. I, I use paint pens for um, added detail, but not necessarily forcing the shape of something. I want to build my paint skills up so that my painting does all the talking and not my paint pen. Because sometimes paint pen can be very loud. It can be very loud, especially for something that's so soft as this project. This is a very soft project. Let's see. My workspace is getting a little dry, so I'm just going to spritz it with one spritz of water. 
Okay. I'm gonna keep loading my brush. My and here. by spritzing my workspace, it keeps me from having to go back into dirty water and picking up dirty water. It's helping me just get, get that nice little soft look around the edges. Good morning, Cindy. Uh, hello, Cindy. Hey, uh, Miss Helen. Hello. How are you doing post-Christmas? Uh, I miss Miss Helen. Okay. I met Miss Helen at a, at a paint retreat. Oh. And we have, we have been just little, Excited. almost like chips in the night as, as what, what, what do, what does my, my grandmother used to say? She's a little, like, you, like you see people as you are coming and going. And I yeah. catch Miss Helen in the comments ever so often, usually at the tail end of something. Um, because I stay so quiet sometimes in the comments because I'm usually watching uh -huh. as I'm holding clothes or You're painting something. Like Barbie Elsa. And the I'm like Barbie Elsa in the comments. Yeah. Mom, you get, you, did your two grandmothers die? One of them has passed away, yes. Nini's mama passed away. Your Nini didn't. Yeah, Hobo Doug's mama is, still, uh, is alive. That's Momo. Oh, that's my granny, though, too. That's your, that's your uh, Momo. Oh, yeah. Like, just call her. I never see her. I know. We need to go see her, don't we? Yeah, right. Today. Well, you're, no, you're not feeling the greatest. You're still not out of the woods. <laughs> okay, so we've got, we've got our gray sky outlining a good portion of our, of our, uh, our skate. Now, do y'all see those snowflakes really, really popping up now that they're really, really, really dry? Told you things dry a little darker. So when you're working with uh, acrylic paint, j don't judge it until it's completely dry. Don't judge it until it's nice and bone dry because things get darker. Even the lightest little layer, like what we're doing right now, adding our shading, lightest layer that we could possibly put on our project. But it is such... A different it's such a deeper color once it's completely dry it really starts to show up I'm gonna go up here on the very tip top of the skate where there's a little bit of a an opening so if you see right here there's a little bit of an opening I'm going to put a little bit of this gray sky I am gonna spritz it because that's dry I, 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 I need a little bit of water, just a I, little bit. I didn't like my dream. You didn't like your dream? Nope. And no. that's going to give me the lightest little layer of gray sky. It's not going to be overpowering. It's just dark enough to um, to signify it's it's a shadow. It's a little. It's on the inside of the skate and not the outside of the skate. I'm also going to want to go underneath that opening and that. add a little bit of shading there. Okay, I'm not going too fast. Yes, you are. Well, it's a good thing it's a video because it can be paused, huh? Yep, do that. Okay, so now we're going to bump over to our darker gray. So we're going to use, um, what color should we use? Purple. Um, not purple. Pink. Yellow. Or uh, yellow and pink. Is this gray? What is this? This is late gray, just a little bit darker than gray. Late, 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 late. Hey, Miss Linda, coming to hang out with us. All right, so we are going to use a uh, slate gray. I'm going to clean my brush, so I'm going to put it in that that dirty paint water that has a uh, brush cleaner in it, and it's going to help loosen up all that uh, paint in my brush. All right, I'm going to squeegee my, my brush real good to make sure I get all that dirty water out of it. I'm going to put a little bit of that slate gray on the toe of my brush. I'm going to come back over to my wax paper, and I'm going to start building that into my brush. Okay. All right, and instead of dipping my brush in water, I'm going to just dampen my workspace. I love these little spritz bottles. I get them at Hobby Lobby. Absolutely love them. I'm going to start on the back end of this skate. I'm done. You're done. Yeah, look. Look at it. 
Oh, it's absolutely beautiful, Raylan. Thanks. Show them. You want me to show them? Yeah, look. See her chicken? Actually, it goes that way. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I'm going to put it over here to dry. If, if, if can I can hang it up. Yeah, and then we'll hang it up. This is my beautiful angel. So I'm going to start on the back end of this this heel, okay? On the back end of the heel of the of the skate. I like good at fairy. And I'm going to just build that up. Okay, and I'm going to walk it out a little bit. That just means bring it further in because it's round. Anything that's kind of got a round shape we want to build that shadow up okay see it's just the slightest little difference in the color now if I want to build that up even more we want to blow dry it ah! we want to blow dry it and do a second layer oh miss carol says that your chicken is so beautiful thanks all right, if we want to build it up, we just go ahead and do a second layer. And I'm just bringing it in as far as I want to bring it in. That's that's her body. Like, that's her chest and her hands. Oh. Okay, and then I'm just going to bring the toe and just kind of outline the rest of my the heel. Again, if I want it to be a little darker, if I want to intensify that color, all I have to do, dry it, add another layer. And I think I'm going to do that. I like it. So pretty. Oh, hey, Dina. I like it. I did. I had. I'm not going to say. Well, I guess it was peaceful because we were sick. Ray Lynn and I took turns being sick. In fact, it. what she had yesterday was just us passing it back and forth between the two of us. I was jumping all day, all day long. All day long. Um, she. Cause last day the it's just, all it is is was you you're achy like you have the flu but you don't have the flu, like it's the achiness of the flu and it's the headache and it's the uh, fever. But other than that, there's there's no nausea, there's no loss of appetite. It's just the achiness of the flu. And it, it just, it was awful. All right, we're going to do the same thing on the toe of the skate. Let's see if we can get you at a better angle. Without my brush bopping into it. Again, slate gray. And instead of adding water to my brush... I'm just going to add water to my workspace. Just a little bit of a fine mist. Like you want it to be a little further from the from the project. I'm gonna put a little bit on this the tiptoe of this brush of this of this skate, but not a lot. I just wanna to signify that this is this is round shaped, okay? Anything that's round on the edge, you wanna put a little bit of a of a shade just because round things. The further they go back, the darker they get. So this makes it look like this toe kind of curves around. It helps your eyes see that. So I'm really going to fixate. The, the shade is down here on the bottom in the back. Okay. I'm just going to really... And anything that's a rounded shape you want to bring you want to round your corners sharp corners get a little bit of a of, of a walk in and we're going to just bring this up and it's the softest lightest little layer of paint it's barely there i'm going to bring it up so you can really see it see it, it's nothing heavy it's nothing startling it's, it's just enough to give you some dimension Okay, we're not done with that toe. We're gonna, we're really gonna work on it. I'm almost finished. I'm dampen it again. Again, we're not using a lot of water. This is just a little bit of a spritz. We're going to soften all of these edges up. More dots. Okay. I'm just softening them up. 
moving that paint around before it completely dries. All right, so we're going to do another layer of gr uh, slight gray. And I'm going to deepen. Sorry, all my brushes are sliding on me. I've cleaned all my brushes. Not deep cleaned, but I gave them a good rinse at the sink. I'm going to deepen this down here. I just want it to be a little bit darker, especially close to that, that um, sole, the sole of the skate. Done. Good job. Are you completely done painting? Yeah. All right. You're going to go watch Bluey for a little bit? No, I'll watch you. Okay. You're right. I'm going to clean my brush. Why you stay there the because whole that, that's time? That's a good bit. I'm, I'm, that's a little heavy. I'm going to spritz it again. I cleaned my brush. I'm going to spritz it, and I'm going to move a little bit of this paint around. My leg hurts. Your leg hurts. Maybe you should go lay down. I think it's the way you're sitting, baby. Uh, I sit down by, I must sit down like, like a lady now. Yes, please sit like a lady. <sighs> so I'm just moving that paint around. I don't want it to be um, like a border. I just want it to be just a little layer of paint. Okay? What about my paint on it? So now we've got our the the body of our shoe, the toe and the heel of our shoe. Let's put a little bit of shade Mom. on the sole. What, baby? Okay. You give me um you know the instructions. The instructions. Right the there. instructions. Yeah, right there. Okay. You want the picture? Yeah, I suppose it's structure. Okay, so it's so like still have to tie. Oh, that's her angle. I'm sorry, she, her little angel. <sighs> and Bob, you still have to tie, and the green. And still, you have the gold. And still, you get, and also okay. you forgot. So to do this color, okay. So this color right here is oh. gray sky, with black mixed in. So what I'm gonna do. Is I'm gonna take slate gray. Here go, I signed up. I can leave. Oh. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit of black. Oh, you can't see that. Hold on. Oh. Uh, just a little bit of black to that. That's really, really, really dark. So I'm gonna go back to my slate gray. That's gonna to tone it down. And maybe. So I'm just yeah. kind of mixing until I'm happy uh. with the color. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it on the very bottom of this sole. I just want the sole of this, uh, of this boot, of the skate, to have just a little bit of a shadow. What, baby girl? Yeah. What do you need help with? What? Baby, uh, mama, mama. I appreciate Well, go lay down in bed. Get under a cover. Oh. And see, it just gives just a little bit. I'll probably wait for it to dry and do a second coat. Probably wait for it to dry and do a second coat. Okay. And I'm going to go back over. Make sure I... Felt a little bit of paint on the back of my hand. And see how that just deepened it up just a little bit, just a little bit. See that little bit of a of a border. Okay. I'm just softening this up a little bit. I feel like my my gray traveled a little bit. There we go. So far, I'm loving how this is turning out. It's subtle. It's it's really 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 dainty, but it's nothing that's that that's too drastic. That that um it's it's eye catching, right? Oh, Raylan's Christmas, she had a blast. She um, she got an iPad, and she has been a little Miss Designer ever since. Um, the iPad was a selfish thing on my part. I kind of enjoy, you know, finding time to draw. 
But anytime I pick up my iPad, she's like, but I want to draw. Can I draw? And I feel bad for saying mommy's working or I feel bad for saying no. Um, because when she sees me and I say I'm working to her, it doesn't, she's like, no, you're not, you're drawing. So she thinks I'm playing all the time and she's just so young. She does not understand that aspect. Um, with any other situation, I would have said, yes, I am. Leave me alone. You know, like I would have, but I truly understand that my work does not look like work, um, that my work looks like play. So instead of waiting till next year, which was our original plan, we went ahead and got her, her iPad this year and downloaded Procreate for her. And she has been doodling up a storm ever since Christmas morning. In fact, I have pictures of her in different stages on the couch. She starts off in one position and about 15 minutes later, I, I look over and she's in a totally different, it's like the stages of drawing. It's so, it was so cute. It was super, super, super cute. Um, but yes, yeah, no, she had a, an amazing Christmas. Both of the kids did. Uh, you painted a long haired cow someplace. It was here. It was here on, um, on the, on the webpage, here, on the webpage. It was here. I'll find it for you, Penny. I'll, I'll, um, I'll link it. I've got it actually here. Hold on. Can y'all wait just a second? Cause I can do that right now because I have it. I have it, uh, saved right here. Eh, go, go over. Okay. So hold on. Go back, go back, go back, go back. Let me see if this is the one that you're talking about. Rock and roll pumpkin. Let's see. Santa, Santa, peppermint. Aha. Is it that one? It's that one in it. Okay. So I'm going to get you the link to that one. Copy, cancel, close. I'm going to go let me make sure my sound is all the way down. See if I can find your comment and just slap that on there real quick. Let's go comments. Okay, there's Penny. Okay, let's go back up to your reply. No, you're going to let me reply. There we go. Facebook wasn't letting me reply. Paste. There you go. Hopefully that makes it to you. I don't know if it'll let you click it while I'm live, but I do know that it'll be there when I'm done um, for it to be clickable. Uh, I, 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 for some reason in my brain, I think Facebook does not allow any links during an active live to be clickable, but I, I'm pretty sure it will be clickable after my live ends. Okay, so we need to, we need to shade the boot. This right here is raw umber. Okay. Raw umber is really dark. Okay. It's a, it's a dark brown. So we're going to do the same situation as we did to darken up this, this, uh, dark gray. We're going to take our raw umber. Okay. Raw umber is a little, little sheer, not, not terribly sheer. And then a little bit of black. All right. We're just gonna, we're going to wait, we're going to work it until we get a nice, deep dark chocolate color that we're wanting. And I'm not going to worry about dampening this. It's such a short, see, it's such a short, um, area. I'm not making this paint travel too terribly far. Like I was on the, the length of this. That's one, that's one thing that I do whenever I'm deciding, am I going to spritz my, 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 my piece or am I going to just go in dry? And usually if I'm going in dry, it's because I'm not going very far. Okay. I'm just deepening the edges. I'm not, I'm not doing a whole lot of crazy um, brushwork here. I'm just deepening the edges to give each, each edge of that, of that heel, uh, a little extra color. You're welcome, Miss Penny. You are so welcome. Let's see. Let's do, 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 do. Highland cows are fun. Once you get the hang of your, like your muscle memory for your brush stroke, they are fun and freeing and just so 
they, they can be a lot of fun to paint. Now, they can be very frustrating the first couple that you, you paint just because you haven't got that muscle memory yet of how, how your hand moves whenever you do that wispy hair. But once you get that, you're good to go. Okay. So we're going to work up on our holly leaf because we're pretty much done with the boot itself until we, uh, until we get to our paint pen. Because like I said, we don't use a lot of paint pen, but we do have uh, reasons uh, and, and situations where we would grab for the paint pen. And this, this design is a good one for um, how I would normally use paint pen. We're also going to use a little bit of metallic down here later, but I like to use metallic just like I like to use black. I like to save it for the end. All right, so I've got leaf green up here. This is Deco Art Leaf Green. We're going to grab, oh, my paint is so far away. I moved it out of the way so that Raylene couldn't grab it. Let me see if I can get it without getting up. There we go. There we go. I need my Hauser Dark or a darker green like a Black Forest. This is Hauser Dark. Let's go in with the Hauser Dark. So I base cut it with leaf green. I'm going in with Hauser Dark. I don't know how close I can get without my brush um, hitting the... Okay. Where's my water spritzer? Okay. I'm going to just add a little bit of deepness on the points and behind the berries. Okay, we're going to separate each leaf and outline them. Okay. Okay, there we go. That water really plays a trick on, on your eyes, so I'm going to try and catch it. Get that glare out of the way. All right, and I'm also going to go down the middle. So I'm going to turn it to where I'm comfortable, and I'm going to pull towards myself. I'm going to just create a little center line. Okay. See what I did there? Okay, now for this one right here, this one is, is kind of tucked underneath this one. So this one is tucked underneath this one. So I'm going to go behind this, the one that we just painted, and I'm going to create just a little bit of a deeper shadow. It's going to lift that top leaf up. It's going to just, it's going to visually create this optical illusion that this leaf is a little bit lifted up on top of this one. Do, 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 do. Let's see, where did you get your wood template? Okay, so Carol, I cut this out myself, but when I do order my, you're talking about the blank, like the wooden blank. When I order, I order from Home Creations. And I can get you the link to Home Creations. I can get you the link to this design itself. This is a 10 inch. This is a 10 inch and I have mine etched. Okay, mine is etched. Right. There we go. And I'm just going to add a little bit of shadow not on 100% of the leaf, just on the majority of the leaf. I'm not really adding a lot on the entire leaf. I'm just, the closer I get to the point up here where it points up and out, I'm getting thinner and thinner with the shade. So if you notice, it's real thick right here, real thick right here. It kind of tapers in towards the edge right here. So let me get a little closer. So it's real thick real thick, kind of starts tapering in, tapering in just a little bit more, tapering in, and then I didn't do any right here, okay? 
Now, don't forget, we still have to do our center line, just like we did. My piece is dry, so I'm going to add a little bit of water. And I'm going to find the center of my holly leaf. And I'm going to just drag a nice little shadowy line towards the center point. Okay. Now, obviously, holly berries are not green. I just painted them green out of j just making it simple for myself. I was I was painting the leaves leaf green, and I didn't want to have to fussy paint around each individual berry. So I just went ahead and base coated those green too. It's not going to matter um, in the grand scheme of things if there's a green undercoat to my red. Some people swear by green green being an undercoat for red. I do not. Um, I do believe it, it, it works. I do believe that it is a, I hope Raylan did not grab my, I think she did. My little pouncer. I think she did. Hold on. Let me look in here. No, maybe not. I had, I had a small little pouncer. It has disappeared. Had it all set aside and everything because I knew I was going to use it. That's okay. That's okay. I've got more. I have a whole Ziploc bag full. So I get my pouncer from all different places. I get them from Walmart. I get them from Dollar Tree. The yellow ones come from Dollar Tree and they're amazing. They're amazing. I've washed them a million times. Uh, I, my other ones I've gotten from Walmart. They're fine. They're not my favorite. But in a pinch, in a pinch, they work just fine. Well, my favorite ones do come from the Dollar Tree. All right, so this one came from Walmart. I believe it's Apple Barrel brand. I don't think so. This is a half inch. This is a half inch. So I'm going to dip it in my Santa Red. Come over to my workspace and pounce most of it off. Okay, most of it's getting pounced off. One, I'm twisting and turning my pouncer because I want it to get fully saturated evenly. I'm going to pick up a little bit of white, a little bit of white. So I've got Santa red, a little bit of white. It's actually a lot of white. Make them a little pinky, pick up a little bit more Santa red. And just ever so slightly work that color in. I'm pouncing, pouncing, pouncing. And I'm going to come over to my piece. I'm going to go to one berry and give it a nice little quarter turn. So I'm going from like noon to three o'clock. Okay. Do the same thing. Okay. Load it up again. We're going to blow dry it because wet paint moves wet paint. And we want to build opacity. So we're going to blow dry it so that when we go in with our second coat, it's building on top of dry paint. And it's not going to smear. It's not going to smear our paint. So we're going to go back over in the exact same order. Remember, wet paint moves wet paint. go. There's our holly berries. And because I put a little bit of white on just the, the, the very edge and I pounced it into, it gave us a nice little gradient on our berries. And we didn't have to work hard on that. I might do a third coat. I think I want to do a third coat on that. Okay, so y'all asked how my Christmas was. How was yours? I want to know how yours went. Was it peaceful? Because that's all I really wanted. I just wanted a quiet day. I just wanted to, and I got it. Now, I was sick, but I think that's the reason I, I did get the quiet day because I was not feeling well. And my husband was trying to, he was trying to um, protect me at all costs. He was like, look, mama doesn't feel good. I stayed on the couch most of the day, motionless. 
And even though I didn't feel good, I, I was still able to enjoy the day. There we go. So, oh, yeah. That third coat made all the difference. That third coat made a huge difference. I also got a new iPad. It was a wonderful course. Oh, Cindy. I can't wait to see what you do with the iPad. All right. So we're going to go ahead. So we have the majority of the paint done. We still need to paint our silver down here. So let's go ahead and pick out our silver. Um... Let's see, we got silver glitter. That is the brand I like. That's folk art. Ha ha, yes. This is my favorite silver of all time. It's my favorite silver. This is Deco Art Extreme Sheen in 10. I like Dazzling Metallics too. That's another one of my all-time favorites, Dazzling Metallics. And I can't remember what the silver is called. It may just be called. Here's a silver silver. We're going to go with the silver silver because the tin, I don't know if you can see the difference. The tin, when it shines, it's like super dark or when it's not shiny, it's super dark. The, the silver, it still stays silver. But when they shine, they're pretty much very similar. But do you see the creaminess, especially on the tin? Do you see how creamy it is? We're going to go with silver. I have not been successful with Procreate. Look, it, it hits a learning curve. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say it's the easiest program to learn, but it is not the hardest. I paid for a class and still not getting it. Um, there are different people who teach it. There are uh, different, uh, each person, te oh, that's still not, that's so liquidy. Come on. Um, they all have different teaching styles and just like learning math. Okay. Not all of us learned math by watching our teacher do it. We, we had to be hands on with it. We had to see the little cubes physically adding up to be what the answer was instead of counting on our finger, you know, and with Procreate, I truly believe you have to pick the right teacher for you, not necessarily um, the right program. It's just the person that helps explain in a language that you understand. Um, I didn't use a program. I just, I'm one, I'm the, I'm, I was always the kid that took things apart and put it back together. So if someone tried to sit and teach me how to do it, it probably would have dri driven me crazy. Um, I probably would not have done well with a class. For something as technical as Procreate, um, I'm trying to think of a way to explain how it operates. So here we go. Oh man, look at that. Look at that. This is going to take at least two coats. Okay. So the first coat is just getting that metallic color just kind of layered on. Metallics, if to do them right without brush strokes, you need to do thin layers. You cannot just slap it on there and call it a day. I'm very worried. She went and laid down on her own again. I have a feeling she's kind of, her second wind has ran out. We kept trying to tell her that she woke up feeling a lot better. Her fever had gone down. Um, but I had a feeling she was going to wake up and feel fine and start playing and get overheated and then crash again. No, 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 no. I married a math major. Big help. Big help. Yes. So for people, so I have a friend. She's an English teacher. She married a math teacher. And I'm not going to lie. I've watched them two interact together. And when it comes, they like, when it comes to the things that they struggle with, they married the right person to be able to help them. Um, Graham. And I, I'm a creative person, but I'm also a very math brained person. Um, Graham tends to be a math brained person too. 
so we frustrate each other. We frustrate each other a lot when it comes to the way we compute finances in our heads, which is the, you know, the most common math as an adult is your finances, right? So we frustrate each other a lot when it comes to our finances because the way he computes finances in his head and the way I compute finances in my head, both being math brained people, it's, um, it's, it's a struggle for our marriage. It really is. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's definitely a thorn in both of our sides. So we, we pretty much just avoid it at all costs, that, that conversation. We just avoid it. Okay, so see how that's really, again, we're going to have to build this light look up to get it to what we want it to look like and to do it right without brush strokes because metallics are the world's worst about brush strokes. So for Christmas, I got, um, I asked for a canister set. It's a, like, you probably have seen it advertised to you on your Facebook or your TikTok accounts, but I, I, I literally, I genuinely wanted it. And they are uh, plastic canisters that have the lids attached, like they hinge. They don't come completely off. They hinge. So one, you can't lose lids. Two. Each container is perfectly sized to a, a average size, whatever's supposed to go in there. So if it's a sugar container, it fits like a 10 pound bag of sugar or a five pound bag of sugar. I think it's a 10 pound bag of sugar. Um, if uh, the brown sugar container fits a, a, a average size bag. So when you buy a bag of sugar, it fits in there, right? Um, the, the scoop, they each come with their own scoop. They each come with their own scoops so that they have their own designated scoop. You're not using your measuring cups to just measure out um, the average scoop of whatever, um, brown sugar or, but they come out, they, they have their own scoops. I like that. And the scoops are, have like little inserts to, in the lid to where they just click in. So you never lose the scoop. The scoop themselves were not the thing that I really cared about because I know I'm, I'm probably just going to be habit-based and use my, my measuring cups anyways because everything, every, every recipe requires a different amount of whatever. But um, I, what was the other, what was the other reason? Oh, and they nest. So they, they perfectly stack on top of each other to fit in an average size cabinet. So only one cabinet, one section of a cabinet is being taken up by all your baking goods. And I was like, sold, done. I want that. I want that. All right. So there we go. One more layer and we should be done with this metallic. I'm telling you, when you want, oh, look what I did. I just scraped that. When you want even coverage of a metallic, you really need to take your time and build it up. Like if this was, if this, if I was just putting a metallic swoop on something, obviously I would just put as much metallic paint on my round brush and put the little swoop. But since we're wanting an even coverage on an entire element of our project here, I really want to do it right and put an even layer of metallic and build it up. I want to build up opacity. And remember, wet paint moves wet paint. You are going to drive yourself crazy by trying to speed the process of metallics by adding um, a new layer of paint before the last one is dry. Okay, so here we go. We're going to add another last layer. This should be a, the last full coverage coat of our Extreme Sheen paint. Now, remember, this was in silver on top of a black base coat. And 
And look at that. Look how beautiful that silver looks. It's perfect. It's perfection. We're going to let that dry. Now I'm looking. I'm, I'm looking on my mock-up right here. I can do this without it. Eh, hold on. Raylan's pink tray is trying to travel. So I'm looking on my mock-up. And I pretty much have everything completely painted except for all of that detail work that we are going to do with a paint pen. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Do you see what I did here? Do you see what I did? Some of Raylan's paint got on our boot. That's okay. Baby wipe. Be the trick. Got on. They come on the back. Clean this up. It's going to ruin our little mock-up here, but that's okay. I'd rather it be ruined on the mock-up and not on my piece that I've been working really hard on. Okay. I'm going to try and avoid this because it's still tacky. It's still a little wet. And if even if I have to come back and do a last, like a last minute coat, because I do see one little spot right there that's not quite the same coverage as everything else, I'm going to let that completely air dry. I'm going to come over here and work on my detail work. So I'm going to grab my paint pen bag. Do, 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 do. I'm going to grab a 1MR black and possibly a 3M black if I can find it. That's 1MR. 3M. Okay. So we have a 3M and a 1MR. 1MR is about the size of a felt tip pen. So anybody who likes to use those flare tip pens, I love them. Didn't used to. I fought them. Um, but if you like the, the felt tip pens, then um, that's about the size of the 1MR. The 3M is about the size. This one, oh, so empty. <laughs> Hi, I go back and forth watching the replay. Oh, hey, hey, Rhonda, I am so excited. Well, this one's live, so if you're here right now, you're live. But the replay will be available, and you can put hashtag replay to let me know that you came to hang out. The 3M is the perfect size for the little laces. And all I'm doing is I am just um, drawing this on. I can't, baby. What's the matter? Your time. Well, have you tried going to the bathroom? You don't want to? I hope she's not really like getting the other side of the flu. I'm really hoping she doesn't have the flu. I didn't have the flu. I just had achiness. Um, I'm gonna put. I'm going to just color in my little circles right here. She's saying that her tummy hurts a little bit. We're almost done here and I'll go check on her. I feel like she has not eaten. Well, no, I guess she did eat breakfast. I'm trying, I'm, brand, I'm like walking myself backwards. You know, when your kids are sick, you're just like, okay, so what has happened in the last 24 hours that could trigger the symptom that they have right now? I think she she had, what was she, okay, so she did not eat dinner last night. And so Graham gave her what she should have had for dinner last night. He gave it to her for her breakfast this morning. And that had a lot of cheese on it. So what I'm thinking is that the cheese is not sitting well in her belly and she, we may be seeing that cheese here again pretty soon if you catch my drift if that's what i think is going on i think she's gonna be okay for the minute though okay so we have our 3m that we um we did our laces with we're going to take our 1MR. Like I said, this is the one that's about the size of the felt tip pins. I'm going to connect. Let me see if I can see that etch line a little better. Oh, there is no etch line for that one. Okay. 
So I'm going to do a nice little curved line right there. And I'm just going to play connect the dots from middle to middle. Okay. And that creates the lace part of our, of our boot. And now all we have to do is do the, the, the late, the actual lace, the lace that wraps around. So I'm going to blow dry all of that because my hand's going to have to cross it. So I'm going to blow dry this. It's not going to take a, but a second because paint pen has a lot of alcohol in it. Will I be sealing over the marker lines? Yes. I'll show you how I seal. I'm actually going to try a new sealing technique for when you do use paint pens. I'm going to try something on this today. So you're going to be, you're going to be seeing it in real time. All right. So I am just adding my little lace lines. I do not like dragging my hand over wet paint, paint pen lines. Nothing's worse than a smear paint pen line, which is, Ruth, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that's why you're asking if, if you're, if I'm going to demonstrate how to, to seal over the paint lines because you probably have had some heartache with them smearing in the past. I'm going to test drive a new um, sealing technique today for specifically for working with paint pens. So let's see. I'm going to do a little loop de loo. Here we go, loop de la. All right, I'm just making my little bow, a little makeshift bow. Okay, I'm gonna put me a little knot right there. Doesn't have to be perfect. No knot. And there we go. We are, I need to do one more little coat down here because now that it's dried down, it's still a little tacky, but it's, it's not so tacky that I can't do another coat. All right. Again. Extreme sheen in silver. I'm not even going to pour it out. I'm just going to use what's in the cap. Boop. Okay. There we go. Oh, perfect. Now, I'm blow dry that completely. Now, if we wanted more, if we wanted more definition, if we wanted there to be a little bit more deepness, richness to it, we could definitely go over our shade lines again, or we could add, use paint pen. On a smaller piece like this, detail work with a paint pen, I would stick with the 1MR, the really smaller felt tip um, pen size. I would not go through, th this 3M is way too thick to be doing detail work. Um, on a door hanger, 3, 3M is my favorite, unless I want it really chunky. And if I want it chunkier, then I'd go 5M. But I'm not big on chunky paint, uh, paint pen lines. Morning, Debbie. Isn't it cute? This is, a, this is an older design. This one, I think, came out last year. Um, and it has been highly requested. So I felt like, why not? Since, you know, Christmas is over, we're going into winter season. Um... The first day of winter was officially a couple days ago. I mean, I felt like this was a, this was a good little, good little one to start the winter season out with. Now, let's do a little bit of highlight, just a little bit, just a little bit. So I'm going to break out my makeup brush. This is a makeup brush. It's not a, it's not an actual traditional paintbrush. It's just a makeup brush. It's a, a it's a fluffy eye shadow brush. I'm going to add just a little bit of white to my, my, brush. I'm going to pounce it. I'm going to buff it in. Okay. 
So I'm going to pounce it and really get it nice and, and I'm, um, as I pounce, I'm doing this with my fingers to really get even coverage. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to buff the majority of this out. Okay. I want you to see how little, see, that's still a lot of paint. I don't want a lot of paint. I want it to be a, like a wispy little cloud in the sky. Perfect. Okay. So if I want to add a little bit of highlight, I'll go in the sections that don't have any shade to them. I'll just add a little bit of a highlight. And if you notice, I'm way back on the back end of the brush. I'm, I'm, I'm way back here and not down here. And I'm just going to add a little bit. This is a skippable step. You do not have to do this. This just adds a little bit of brightness without having to do a bunch of highlight um, floating. Just adds in that just a little bit of brightness. Okay, we're going to go on the toe of our, bra of our, of our boot. You notice I did not go into my actual puddle of paint. I just went over here to where I pounced off and, and brushed off the majority of it. This builds up. This is one of those steps where you have to have a little bit of patience. because It's going to look like you're not putting any paint on there at all. And the more you build, the more you go over it, the more it builds up and you're able to see it. See? See the little bit of brightness right here, the little bit of brightness right there. This is not a step I do on every piece. It's just there's certain ones where I feel like it got super dark and it's not supposed to be a dark project. I'm just going to put a little bit on the center of my leaves. Not a lot. If you don't like it, you can always get a baby wipe and, and buff it away. I'm going to attempt to try to get it in the center of each holly berry. Don't know if I have enough room to really make my circles. But there we go. A little bit. And that's it. That's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to do it in the, the heel, the toe, and the leaves a little bit. We're done with that. I'm going to put it in the water. We wash it just like any other brush. I love the way that you do your shading. You are great at uh, taking your time and showing exactly how you do it. I love Oh, thank you, Janet. I do try to take my time. Now, I paint fast, so I do know that in the how long, an hour that we've been here painting, um, I don't expect anybody else to, to jump in head first and be able to paint this in, a, in an hour. Now, remember, I started off with this base coated. This had white, gray, and the brown and the green already on there. All we did was all the shading, right? I break this into steps. I don't try to do it all at once. There are times where I have to take a break and walk away. I think we're good. I'm going to try and wipe the majority of the excess paint off because we're about to do a step on here in just a minute. That's going to take our piece. See all that over paint? See all, how, how just kind of yucky that looks? I don't know if I have an extra pen over there, but I do have a chunky paint pen. So there's two ways of getting rid of that. You can use a furniture marker, which mine's almost dead. I don't know how well this is going to cover today because yesterday it was on its last leg. I need to get a new one. Or you can use a super chunky paint pen. Okay. So either one of those will work just fine. I like the furniture pen a little better just because it has a little um, smaller of a chisel. And I can get into these little uh, cutouts a little easier than that. Yeah, see that right there? See how it took it from looking like that to looking like that? one of my favorite painting tips. The only problem it, that I think I'm going to come across is this metallic. I think it's still a little tacky. And so I don't know how well it's going to cover that without gumming up my, my paint pen. All right, we're about to seal. I'm going to, I'm going to do this step and then we're going to seal this thing and we're going to get it ready for putting outside because this is going to go on my porch leaner. Look at all that over paint. 
See, it even goes over the metallic. Now, if this was a fresh furniture marker, if I would have only needed to do one swipe. This is, this one's, um, it's seen its last day. Is Rama outside? Maybe that's the wind. I just heard something on my back porch shift, something metal shift, and it's heavy. I like, in my, I hear it, and I know exactly what it is. If you ever hear something, and you're like, is that the grill cover? <laughs> it wasn't the grill cover. It's the firewood, the thing we carry firewood with, and it just shifted on the concrete out there, and I'm like, is there an animal on my back porch? All right, I'm going to actually use paint pen for the rest of this because that is literally on its last leg. It's not, it's not going to, um, it's not going to go any further. What, baby? All right, as soon as I'm done painting, baby, I'll get you some juice. All right, but it does the same job. It's just got a, a, a really thick chisel tip and it's really hard to get into these smaller places sometimes without making a mess. So I really prefer the Dollar Tree furniture pens. I get them in the automotive section. Don't ask me why they're in the automotive section. They're furniture pens. But I get them in, and they come in two different color schemes. I always grab the one that has the black one because that's the only one I use. I throw the other two away. I don't even attempt to use them. The black one is the only one I use. And for $1.25, it's worth buying the pack of three just for the one pin. All right, we're on the last little Ooh. Okay, there we go. Now, because we use paint pen on the edge, we do need to be careful about when we go to brush on our sealer. Okay, so I told you that we were going to try a new technique for sealing over paint pen. So let's do that. Let's do that. Do we want to add glitter first? Is there anything we want to put glitter on? I had originally thought I'd put glitter on my, on my, um, holly leaf and berry, but I think I'll leave it alone. Let's see. I want to use my makeup sponge. So the same makeup sponge that we used earlier, I'm going to use my makeup sponge. I'm going to cut the painted tip off. It gives us a clean makeup sponge. I'm going to grab my sealer and put a little sealer in the lid okay i don't need a lot my nose is itching hopefully this works i just want to pounce over the um I just want to pounce over the, the paint pen so that we don't smudge it when we go to add our brush strokes. Because, you know, when you do too many brush strokes over paint pen, it gets kind of messy. It get, it'll it get real splotchy. It will smear your paint pen. And I think this is a light enough layer that we can seal this paint pen in without smearing it. So this is that new technique that I was saying. We're going to test drive it and we're going to see how it, how it goes. And I'm just making sure I'm getting full coverage over. Yeah, we're good. I'm going to set this aside because we're done with it. I'm going to blow dry and seal that in. Now we can go back with our brush stroke, with our brushes, and actually brush on the rest of our sealer. I wish I had a pair of boots this cute. <laughs> so this was actually inspired. I remember uh, designing it. This one was inspired by, uh, it was a very, very cute rustic wreath that my mama gave me. I don't know where she got it. I'm sure she picked it up at a garage sale somewhere. And she had it in her um, garage for years, I'm sure. But she picked it up. I don't know if she ever displayed it. But she was cleaning, cleaning some things out. And she brought it over. She goes, it's just too pretty to get rid of. And I figured you could probably use it. And she was right. I loved it. Um, it's in my attic right now. We did not put it out this year, but it, this was designed off of that wreath. So what the wreath was, was it was planks of wood that kind of made a hexagon. 
I don't know. It was in the shape of a wreath, but it was just planks of like pallet wood. It was so pretty. Um, that was the wreath part. Okay. There was no greenery on it. It was just a nice little farmhouse wreath. And then it had um, some vintage skates as the centerpiece with a bunch of greenery around the skate itself. And it made the prettiest, I mean, it was just pretty. It was very unconventional, but pretty at the same time. So I was like, ooh, I like that. And I remember putting it, I, it was displayed somewhere in, in my house last year or the year before as I was designing for this one, this design. It was sitting in my house and I kept looking at it and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to make a design. I'm going to make a design that looks like that. Okay. You know what I forgot? I forgot the little breathing holes that your shoes have down here. I can do that after I seal. That's just a, that's just a little paint pen work. But since I pounced the sealer on to the paint pen, I can, I can do as many brush strokes as I want without smearing that um, paint pen lace. The lace, uh, the lace on the, the paint painted, how can I put that? The paint pen we used for the laces. <laughs> Ooh, that, that was, that took a, that was a struggle. So I'm just blow, I'm blow drying each layer of sealer. I'm probably going to put two layers of seal on here. Well, hello there, Marie Mosley. I just saw your comment. Okay, that should be nice and dry. Just do a little, I'm gonna put a little bit more in the lid. Not a lot, it doesn't take a lot. I just put just a little bit in the lid. I think after I paint today, I think I'm gonna sit at the sink and do a deep clean on all my brushes just to, just so we can start the new year off right with some clean brushes because they're starting to get a little bit paint heavy. It's been a while since I've done a, a true deep clean of all of them. So I think I'm just gonna gather up all my brushes and we're just gonna spend a good hour deep cleaning and reshaping them. All right, that's it. That's, that's all we're gonna do. Drop a sealer that was not going to end well. I'm also going to wash my paint rag. <laughs> That's why I like to use paint towels because I can wash them and reuse them. I like reusable things. So using paper towels to paint with, it, it's nice when you're away from home and you oh, and I can throw this away this wax paper I can throw it away um I also like to use meat trays as my paint palettes because I mean they just keep the paint I mean look how crazy my paint palette is that's a year well not quite a year's worth of paint that's a year's worth of paint oh I finally found that pouncer that we were looking for earlier I hid it from myself <laughs> All right, so we're going to blow dry this because remember, we need to put these little holes down here because that is part of the design, these little holes. I did forget that. I feel like they're important. But she's ready for some Velcro and to go hang on my on my door or on my porch cleaner. Okay, dry. Let's take our paint pen. I'm not going to worry about sealing this in, although I do still have my excuse me, sorry, I was about to sneeze in your face. Um, I still have my, my, my pouncer over here that's still full of sealer. I could probably. Go. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's just be done, right? Let's just be done. <clears throat> So with paint pen, 
Well, it's just like your matte acrylics. They get matte when they're dry. So if they're still glossy, they're wet. But if they're matte, they're dry. So we're just going to take our pouncer. Let's seal that in. Uh -uh. They weren't completely dry. Good thing this is sealed. Guess what I can do? I can just wipe it away. There we go. Drying the baby wipes so my paint pen doesn't travel. See, we, we didn't dry it enough, apparently. All right. So Gina's asking, which brush on sealer do I use? I typically use Liquitex. My friend Bonnie um, kind of turned me on to this. I've, I used to use polycrylic, which I still love. I do love my polycrylic. comes in a can. Um, it just, the smallest you can buy is a quart. And I just have not tr ever transferred it in to anything. And so it has just always gotten kind of gunky inside the can. I'm pretty sure if I was responsible enough, <laughs> I could probably um, still use polycrylic. But when I'm shopping for paint, this is at the paint store. So it's just, it's just an easy buy. It, it is a little pricey for a sealer, but I've used that all year this past year. And it's only about halfway gone because you don't use as much as you think you would use. As far as spray sealer goes, I like to use Krylon Triple Thick in the extra gloss. And the high gloss, I think is what it's called. But I don't spray seal a whole lot anymore. I spray seal my door hangers. Typically, I will I will spray seal my door hangers. But on these smaller projects, I like to use brush sealer. Look at the silver. Ugh. So the black undercoat really makes it bright. I know that seems off to say, but that's it really makes it bright. And then y'all were right. The peekaboo snowflakes really bring it to life, really gives it a little extra visual interest in the original mock-up that does not contain the, the snowflakes. I absolutely love it. I cannot wait to go hang it. It's so pretty. It's so dainty and wintry and pretty. So if you end up painting one of these, if you have any questions or if you need the, the paint list or a link to the uh, wooden blank, this is a 10 inch. Um, you can get it in any size between four inches to 24 inches and the cutouts will be cut out. As far as I know, I'm pretty sure the, I'm pretty sure the cutouts are cut out. Um, but you can get those at home creation so I can get you the link for that as well. But until next time, I will see you the next time we paint together will be 2023. See you later. Bye.